All right, welcome back to uh, what quickly became the, uh, what, the, the, the the weekly Mega Man Battle Network podcast. The uh, well, the, it became the Battle ne the Battle Network podcast. That's correct. Um, Boy, yeah, of course. And uh, no sense talking about the game we're looking at. <laughs> this is this is the Switcher on YouTube.com or SuperBestFriendsPlay.com, the home of people. Who fuck through games that they don't pay attention to. Fuck through <laughs> games that they don't pay attention to. I'm trying to ban pay attention this time around, though. Um, yeah, we're almost, we're actually almost done this dungeon. Yeah, we shouldn't be too far. Uh, we shouldn't have too much longer to go. I Seems think. like you already did this yeah, room. Yeah, I did this though, room, yeah. so I think um, we pretty much we just need to finish off the rooms we didn't do and get the, the sweet, sweet rewards from the rooms above. As, as well as hit those switches. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, uh, you know, I know you're looking for your sweet, sweet rewards, and that's that's nice and all, I guess. Um, a friend of ours, friend uh, of ours gave us this Mega Man X Command Mission Official Strategy Guide. Commando uh, Joe. By Brady Games. The um, same guy, the same motherfucker, <laughs> who uh, slid this disc of Command Mission over to me. He strong-armed us and threatened our children. I sat at it. I was sitting at a table. I was having a sip of my drink. And he used the game as a coaster and slid it over in my direction. Well, he knows what's up. That's protected. Can't get yep. that. Um, so he gave us a strategy guide. And uh, I don't want to say it's too late because it's not. We're still playing the game. No, no, no. But we are most of the way through the game. So I was looking at the strategy guide. And I was like, man, there's not. But it's handy to have that really gonna, in your life. It's not really going to help that much, is it? But then at the end, I found my fucking sweet <laughs> pearl in this oyster, in this smelly oyster. On the last... I on the, on the wish, back page. I wish you opened that up here. I wish I did too. It, while recording instead of before we did. Because if you guys could have seen the look on Liam's face, joy. I was so happy. Pure joy. And it I'm, was. I'm still feeling pretty good about like, this. It was an, and his mouth was open like. <gasps> <laughs> so. Uh, what did you find, Liam? Stuck on the back page is a Mega Man trading card game card. Uh, it's, uh, it's stuck face down, and it's sealed. It was meant to be in the strategy guide, so I still don't know what card it is. Um, and so I'm about to reveal this Mega Man trading card game card. Stuck to the back of the strategy guide, so that means... Glued in, it seems everyone to be. So it was meant to it. be here, yeah. yeah. So that was the right time frame. This is a promo card. That, that game was in the, at the peak of yeah. its, of its I, life. I, I played it briefly, actually, with, uh, with some friends, and yeah, it was, it was mostly, uh, network, uh, not network transition, battle network cards that we played with so i'm curious to see if this is going to be a battle network card or a mega man x and sure enough it is a mega man x ah. and it is one of the most boring mega man cards i've ever seen uh let me let me actually take it Crack out of its yeah, plastic yeah. what do we wrap. got what, wait, we, what are we rocking with let me get that no out. nice nice getting the sounds of it and everything yeah and do you still have your deck no absolutely not there we go it is one Mega Man X promo card. Uh, he's not a particularly good card, and his flavor text is uh, possibly. So you'd say he's not a good card, eh? <laughs> <laughs> not a good card, eh? <laughs> oh, he's dead. <laughs> not at all. He's dead. Good riddance. Um, his flavor text is free Mega Man X command mission passcodes at MegamanTCG.com. That's literally what it says. That's literally what it says. So thank you, um, Capcom. And uh, Decipher Inc. for this um, shitty promo card. Uh, what is this? What's the point? 12 years late. Oh. Uh, this wasn't a good card when it came out. And Can I see the art? This is. That's just, just a generic it's X. It's nothing. Okay. It's, in fact, it's not even the Command Mission X. No, it's not. It's not It's not a Command Mission it's, X at all. It's uh, just generic X from, I think it's his first game's design. So uh, now... So this is a shitty shit card, and uh, I will try to sell it on the internet now. What would be considered a good card? A good card? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, uh, what was your deck like? like I mean, not this one. I remember I used Gutsman a lot, but I don't remember the details. How it, did the, what, it was one of those games... What kind that, of card game was it? I mean, it was like you know. Because I don't know anything about it actually. It was, it was like and you know any card game of the time where you had your you had your character cards and you had your ability cards that work with them and stuff. And okay. it was it was built around like it was character based, kind of like like modern Magic: The Gathering is like a bit more like Planeswalker based, which is kind of character based. It was a deck building um, game then. No, it was a trading card game. It was a trading card game. Yeah. Okay, but but I mean like it, it wasn't that, like there was a fixed number that uh, of cards that you had to like kind of pick from. You you bought your packs. And yeah, you, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A trading card game, exactly. Yeah, okay. But I I didn't play it too much. It was one of those games that I played for like 
a summer with okay. friends. You know what I mean? Because and then we and then we got back onto Yu-Gi-Oh and Magic, which were way more important. But like, I, like, there's been a lot of games that I went through like that, where it was just like, oh, I'll play this for a little while. Like, me and my friends buy, like, a starter deck each, and, like, five or six packs, and it, you know, it did us a good while. Okay. But we never, yeah, we didn't really go anywhere with it. Like, we kind of realized we didn't like it as much. Well, the thing is, I assume, in, like, when you're in the middle of going uh, card game crazy, like, you're cycling through quite a few of them until you land on something that's particularly fun. Well, you find the ones that are good, right? Like, like me and my friends, we played, um... Uh, Legend of the Five Rings by Wizards of the Coast, which was really good. That was a, like, uh, if I remember right, it was like a samurai-themed uh, Wizards of the Coast game. Okay. Um, we played ma we played Magic for years and years and years. I don't even fucking know. We played Yu-Gi-Oh! for equally years and years and years. We played Duel Masters. You remember Duel Masters? Uh, as At in Atari put out some games. Uh, some Duel Masters games. Wait, Duel Masters. Uh, like, what? It is not Yu-Gi-Oh. Not Yu-Gi-Oh? Completely, Yu -Oh? completely unrelated to Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay. Uh, Atari put out some Duel Masters video games that I thought maybe you might recognize, because I know mm. you hate infograms. Um, oh, fuck that fucking company for everything <laughs> they're, but, they're uh, fucking worth. But Duel Masters was fun, and we played that for a little while. But, like, the Mega Man card game, the Beyblade card game, and... Ah, uh, what was the other one? It was three card games. I remember we... Uh, Imagination. No, there was four card games then. Mad, like Magi Nation? Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there was also a video game for that. There, there were a few card games that, yeah, we picked up for such a brief time and we, you know, invested a grand total of maybe $40 each in and, and still got some good playtime out of it, but like, we were like, yeah, okay, this isn't this isn't as built to last as Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic or whatever. Okay. And I mean, whether Yu-Gi-Oh! is built to last is kind of... <sighs> That game. Eh. Are you familiar with the concept of power creep uh, in card games and stuff? I'm, I, I'm, well, no, but the word implies that like things just get stronger and stronger and stronger. Things just get stronger to the stronger point that it's stronger. like it's not even fun anymore. Well, it's not that they're not fun, but it's like it's stuff, stupid. Stuff from early sets is useless. Useless. Is yeah. yeah. Worthless. You know, cards from the first set, like like fucking La Jin, who who he had 1,800 attack points, which was a really high amount for a monster that you could just put out with no penalty. Is, is worthless. It, it became obsolete shortly, like, four sets in, and now it's way more obsolete than it ever was, and, and like, any monster without an effect on it is, is garbage, and, like, almost, like, Yu-Gi-Oh!'s first set is, like, composed 60% of garbage and 20% of cards that were banned at some point. Jesus Christ. Because they, they were too good. Wow, okay. But got unbanned or unlimited or... Band or limited, I should say. No, because uh, I mean that's one thing that you know I, any like the those games like the way they make money is by continued releases of yeah, new packs, put out new and content. Sets. Yeah, and so I understand that that's the you know the entire point. But to me, I mean like I never wanted to get into it for those reasons. Yeah, yeah. Pokemon was the most I gave of a, oh, a of chance. Oh, Pokemon to. I played for ages. How did I forget that one? Yeah, I gave Pokemon the the most of you know the biggest chance. Yeah, and that was like okay at a certain point I'm just not going to spend money here anymore. Like yeah. I'm done. Sorry, you know. Yeah. You just gotta turn that one to the right. Uh, no, 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 I'm, I hit the thing. You wanna hit that one? Okay. Yeah. That's fine. You don't wanna hit the random battle? I don't wanna, don't wanna hit, hit the, the random, random battle. battle marker? Okay. The random battle okay. is, no, no. Just making sure. We're good. Okay. We're good. I tried. So, um, uh, you know, and, and basically I think, uh... Yeah, power creep in Pokemon is vicious too. I, yeah, and I just, I, at a certain point I'm just like, well, fuck, if it's, if it's B2W, <laughs> right, if it's kind of a buy to win situation, where the more the guy who spent the most money can build the best deck. I mean, it's still a skill-based game. You know what I mean? Like, it's can can you not just build a strong deck by going well, like ham? There, yeah, I mean, there's a difference between like building the best competitive deck nowadays and like working with a Gen One competitive deck, right? Because like some like, other power creep, has a Charizard. Power creep was slow, right? And the Charizard wasn't gonna win you the game by default in Gen 1, because a Blastoise would demolish Charizard, no problem. If you had, well, that's a, yeah. That's Wait, not even a Blastoise. Like, Sea Kings and, like, Seedra, like, Water Pokemon would demolish Charizard, you know? Right, like, okay. He was very good, but, you know, he, he had faults. Um, but, like, Power Creep in Pokemon and in Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff, like, it's the kind of thing that happens over the course of, like, a decade. Or, like, oh, two yeah. decades, right? Because many, many expansions later. Yeah, because a lot of base set cards in Pokemon stayed stayed relatively competitive for, you know, a bunch of sets. It just took a while to eventually, you know, roll them out, like, to completely roll them out. And now there's cards that you look back on in base set where it's like, well, you're completely, you're completely outclassed. Like, Charizard from base set is completely outclassed. 
he is I don't want he's not a worthless card there's you know he's a he's a collector's item obviously actually I remember winning a Charizard at a tournament that was the prize uh that was it was recent too. That was like Heart Gold Soul Silver time. So, oh, okay. So he still maintains collector's value, but as far as his playability is concerned, besides like he's not a playable card. You're better off picking a modern, like a more modern fire type, because Power Creep has made it so that his damage values and his HP are just lower than than everything else. You know. When when I was at your place last time and you took me through like your your card game collections though. <laughs> Uh, well, that was a, not last time. It was yeah, a while ago. Yeah, a while ago, yeah. But I remember, like, you showed me the, um, I guess, what, what's the name of it? The Complete Card Collector's Games? Or the ones where it's every card from this game is here in this box. Oh, like like deck building games. Like the, deck res building. Like the Resident Evil. Resident like, Evil. Like the Resident Evil one and yes, stuff. Yes, exactly. That game's fucking sick. Yeah, that's what I remember. And, like, I was like, those sound awesome because you don't have to go buy more. And you can still enjoy whatever the property is that you want to buy and, and see cards of. But... It's all complete right here, right now, and you can yeah. have fun with what's what's in front I of mean, you. I that, mean, that's kind of part of the thrill of trading card games, though, is, like, seeing what your opponent's deck is blind is... It's interesting, because you can't possibly predict... There's too many variables. There's, like, it's, it's really a unique situation. You just don't know what you're going to get, mm -hmm. and, like... Sure. If you're if you're playing with people who are who are competitive or semi-competitive, they might have certain like deck archetypes and builds where like after you know if you're playing Magic and you're seeing someone using a bunch of red cards and you're like okay well I I get a feel for what your deck is meant to be and I, I kind of already know, but generally speaking, you can't pinpoint their exact strategy until you see it happen and that's something that deck building games don't really have because the limited number of cards means it gets more predictable you know because well, you know every because you know all the cards right like yeah. like the resident evil deck building game uh, i'm struggling to remember exact number an exact power. number but i feel like it didn't have over 200 cards but i mean uh, has a, has a like in pokemon you know all the moves and you know all the pokemon has a motherfucker ever pulled out some crazy ass Mega Man card that you've never even seen or heard of? Well, I mean, whether you on know, the field of play, whether you know them or not, like even if you know the Pokemon, like they might still have a weird property that's unique to that card because not all Pokemon cards are created equally. Like a Gen One Pikachu has different attacks from, uh, from than than hold, more recent Pikachu's. Hold on. You know, it's I will hold that thought. Botos is a good villain. Got a big, big old mouth. All right, to the top floor. Level one, welcome. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. Is that like a yeah, ah, ah? Something all like right. that. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So he's he's ready to. All but right. like a Pikachu card from from the uh, base set isn't equivalent to a Pikachu card from like more recent sets. They have different moves. In certain cases, they have different weaknesses. Like it's uh, it's those it's those minor variations that like make it interesting, kind of. And in Magic, it's like, like Pokemon, there's still a certain predictability to it where, yeah, you get a Pikachu and I think 90% 90, 90 of Pikachu cards are electric. There are a few that I believe aren't electric. Like, I think Surfing Pikachu is a water type. Oh, okay. Um, oh, there's some weird stuff like that I, in the I, mix. I think Surfing Pikachu is a water type, but it, it's, it's been a long hmm. time since I've seen a Surfing Pikachu card. Those are like crazy outdated. Okay. Uh, I'm actually gonna look that up because I'm curious. Uh, um, so like, you you get little so, variations, but in Magic, the level of variation is so much wider, because you'll see you'll just you'll see a card, and it'll be a bunch of wolves, and you'll be like, well, what's the wolves' deal? And they have their whole their whole unique ability and stuff like that. Unlike Pokemon, where you at least get a feel for them, but nonetheless, like by like. It's that minor variation in cards and trading card games that makes it really thrilling. In deck building games, like in Resident Evil, when I see what character you're playing, I know what weapons you're going to go for. And there's only like 10 weapons or something in Resident Evil. So like I get how your play style is going to kind of have to be for okay. the most part. But with, with trading card games, it's, there's, there's, there's so much more variation. And actually, I'm looking at it. Serving Pikachu is actually electric type, but he needs water energy to attack. So... Okay. He doesn't work in like a monotype deck or something like that. Um, so my B on that. Okay, so there, there, there's a bit more to it then than, than I initially thought. Interesting. Yeah. Um, the the thing in particular with uh, also to just go back to the Mega Man card game. Uh, hold on, I just want to set up for this boss here because uh, yeah, yeah. I believe um, I need to have some fire resistance and have ice on me. Oh, do you? Is what uh, our our friendly guide seems to indicate would be a good idea. So uh, let's set that up. 
but yeah, like the, the what's cool about I guess um, you know from the last episodes we were talking about like Mega Man um, Command Mission and the EXE games and the, you know the fucking Wonder Swans and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I you know your the games you've played and the experience you have with Mega Man is completely different to the one that I have in that you tuned in when I was out. Yeah, you know, like but at the, the same time, the it's like a completely I, valid. I, I tagged out. Well, actually, no. Uh, I, there was there's definitely a middle ground that none of neither of us touched. But yeah, you have more experience with those those games towards the end. So I'm like, if there like what what was going on with the card game? If you don't mind, like card game was nothing. Was there no actual like interesting? It wasn't that good. Oh it was just, man, it was a pretty bland card game. It wasn't that good, straight up. And like, it was one of those card games too, where if I'm remembering correctly, it was like. Um, the card art was anime cells. Okay. Um, which no, that's not a good sign. Uh, when a card game art is like anime it's, or, no, I, or like or movie, it's not a it's not original art. It's just taken from. It's, it's never a good sign because you're like, okay, it's a licensed game. And the yeah, actually, there's another card game that I forgot I played, but the Lord of the Rings trading card game, which was just screenshots quite of the fucking fun, movie. If I remember correctly, was for the most part, uh, yeah, exactly, was uh, was movie, yeah, yeah, that's movie lazy. shots. That is lazy. Um, and it was just like, yeah, it wasn't great. Yeah, here, NT Warrior, it had some art. I don't think it was, I don't know if it was original. All the net navvies and all the character art was like. The ostensibly <laughs> original, but it might just be key art Welcome for the show. Yeah, I'll shut up. I'll shut up right that now. Thought. Yeah. Gotta hear the oh best voice boy. acting. You really must have faith Man, that sound when he walks. The Doink. They actually Doink. grabbed the a little Tom Doink. Tom and made a drum Doink. effect. Since you're about to meet your end by my hands. Is he walking forward? <laughs> I can't tell. It's a walk cycle. Oh yeah, he's getting slightly closer. Yeah. Who are you anyway? Ah yes, forgive me. I am Bowtie. Why were you? Bow why were you programmed and designed to be fat? Who fight for the hopes of uh, why were you built to sound fat? Enough you can get more PR. smart in it. You can put more, you know good for put you. more motherboards, <laughs> put more, put more. I'm I don't fucking more ram. It, more ram. There you go. More LEDs. On this. What is it? Know what this is? Supra Force Metal. It looks like a fucking so Metabot um, metal. Oh yeah. That's right, yeah, it does. Gentlemen. Put that in your Metabot. Looks metal. like Cyclops let himself go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's too much shit on him. <laughs> I can't even see his face now. There's just too much shit on him. I don't really, yeah, I don't really, I can't really say I empathize with this character. Even if he was like a thin version of this, it would still be just like, yeah, goofy shit. A good villain is the protagonist of their own story, and I just don't feel like I'm in with this guy's story. No. And his Texan accent. This is his Reploid Texan. Yeah, I wonder what that is in, in Japanese. If it's just a uh, Hokkaido accent or something like that. Mm, Osaka you know. Ben, maybe. Yeah. Okay, so he calls out the bits. Yeah, so the Lord of the Rings card game also, for the most for the most part, not 100%, was... This song, this song sounds interesting. Was It does, actually. Was uh, screenshots of the of the films for their card art. Yeah, that's But that's, just that's never shit. really a good sign. Oh, he's ground. Okay. Uh, really? Really? That? That seems like a Why? typo. Yeah, that doesn't seem correct at all, but... Uh, Whatever. All right. Yeah, okay, that works. No um, misses. So yeah, because I'm thinking of the Street Fighter card game where Genzo Man... UFS? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genzo I, I, Man have, I have a lot of UFS cards, actually. I have in. so many. I have an Elena deck. And a Lizard Man deck. Um, oh, great. Yeah, Genzo Man came in and did the Street Fighter art. He yeah. did a lot of it. He did yeah. a whole lot of it, and that's good shit. Um, that game's all right. That, game, that game's solid. Yeah, I, I uh, and I, I like I like a lot of his shiny shiny characters with their shiny Elena skin and shiny Makoto. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and like it's original art, like you said. And I remember having my wallpaper at work at one point was all of the card game art, like together, right, yeah. in a big wallpaper, you like know? with all their attacks. It or was what? great. Yeah, you know, that, that card game was neat. I. I and I think Penny I, I Arcade have, was on the same system. Yeah, they, it was their card game, if I remember right. Oh, they? Oh, I really? Th I think they were the originators of it, but I... Ah, not a, a million percent sure. Interesting, okay. U-F-S, Penny Arcade. Let's see. Um, 
I, yeah, I didn't really have people around me who played that game. So I remember I played it at conventions mostly. You know, the areas where people play card games and stuff? Yes. There were a few cons, mostly fan expos, where I played uh, UFS with some people. And that was a fun game. UFS cards, like... I don't know what it was about them. Probably that they sold so badly. But, like, I remember they were really cheap. And I could get fucking tons of them for nothing. And I had, like... I had, like, a huge collection. And I didn't pay very much for oh, it at all. Yeah. Which is really unusual. Yeah, like, I came... No, it was a card... It was a card store in Montreal was shutting down. And there... Yeah, and they had UFS cards down so cheap that I bought, like, eight booster boxes of oh, UFS cards. In one shot. Because they were, like, $15 a box or something. Okay. Down from, like, 100 you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not missing out at all. So I was like, shit, I'll just get in. And I got, like, almost all the cards from the sets that I got in on, which was, uh, Soul Calibur and Tekken. Um, so, like, what is the hallmark of a good card game, then? Because, I, like I said, I never really got in or gave them much of a shot. Um, I, I, I think the hallmark of a good card game is and when probably, it, probably and the same hallmark as a good game, where just the gameplay is thoughtful, and it's, you know, it's enjoyable and thoughtful and varied, and it's also, like, not random. Um, like, a card game, as much as, like, shuffling the deck is an element of it, like, unless you design your deck to be around, like, coin tosses and dice rolls and stuff, which he is sings? which is viable, Sorry, I guess so. Sorry, that's your, that's your fucking He's a multi-talented man. Okay. But, like, unless you design your deck around a random setup of, like, rolling dice or flipping coins or whatever, mm -hmm. um, the game shouldn't feel random, which is, I, I know is, like, again, like, an, an antithesis to shuffling a deck and stuff, but a well-constructed deck doesn't feel random. Like, because you know you're getting the results you're getting because you constructed the deck carefully to fight the randomness. Okay. And certain games that can't surpass that um, sometimes have trouble. That's not usually, like, a problem for many card games, but, like, I've heard people complain about that with Hearthstone a little bit, how the game feels a bit too random sometimes, uh, and that's, like, never a good thing to have. But, but, but like, isn't random... Randomness is expected, and you're fighting against randomness yeah. to win. Yeah. That's, that's... You're, you're like, controlled random... Controlling the randomness is the game, is it not? Yeah, basically, but that's what I'm saying. Like, the card game shouldn't feel random. You know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't be playing... Random cards every to attack time, with. Yeah, like, when I draw my hand, I shouldn't feel like, well, of course I got, I got a shitty hand again. Why would I ever get a good hand. Okay. Like, if you construct your deck properly, pretty much every hand should be, like, every first hand should be a good draw. You know what I mean? Uh, especially because in most card games you can mulligan and, like, put your hand back in your deck and take a second one. Uh, but there's, there's usually a cost to it, uh, depending. Huh. But, like, in Pokemon, That's, like... You're allowed to do that, really? In most games. It's not a universal rule, but in... A bunch of games. I think all of Wizards games had mulligan rules and stuff. Because that's a thing to combat randomness, to right? Fight, yeah, like, okay. It's, it's another tool to make the game feel less random. And, like, in Pokemon, right, you'd construct a deck, like... Um, like, you'd pick a few high-end Pokemon that you felt work well together. Uh, like, you know, say this Charizard and this Houndoom and this Darkrai. They all kind of have a bit of synergy, right? So you'll you'll take them. Darkrai was a bad example, but you take them. And I, don't even, I don't even know what that Pokemon okay. is. <laughs> this, well, whatever. This Charizard and this Venusaur sure, and this yeah. Houndoom work together, right? Whatever. Okay. okay. Um, so you'll you'll have your Charizard and your Venusaur, and you'll have like two of that card in your deck, and then you'll have like three or four Charmeleons and three or four or, and four Charmanders, like universally. You'll fight the randomness by like putting in doubles of your cards, so your odds increase uh, oh, of being able to go like, through. Intentional. I never even thought of putting in doubles intentionally. Actually. Yeah, exactly. Is that a, like how? Is there a limit on what you can four. do? Four. Yeah, in Pokemon, it's four. Okay. You can't have more than four of a single card. Uh, or I can't remember if it's four of a single card or four cards that share the same name. Uh, like you couldn't have more than four Charizards total. You know. Hmm. Um, and, like, you'll also stack your deck with, like, good trainer cards that let you, you know, draw more cards or shuffle your hand into your deck and draw a new card. Like, again, all just stuff that keeps the game from being 
complete randomness. Yeah. Right, and, 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 and in Pokemon in particular, you couldn't just go straight to Charizard. You had to evolve by getting yeah. through the entire, like, uh, evolutionary chain with your Pokemon. Yeah. So you're if looking you put at, in you're four looking Charizards, at... you need to have, like, enough... Uh, you need to have your Char... Your whatever, yeah. the rest Well, the, of the, the, line. the idea of the deck would be, well, you'd want to get a Charmander on turn one, and then you have two more turns to get Charmeleon and Charizard in order to keep it optimal, you know? Optimally, by turn three, you want to have yourself as fully evolved as your energy can support, you know? Okay. Like, if you don't have enough energy, you don't want to evolve to cards you can't attack with, but at the same time, you want to go at, a, like, a really fast speed, because outpacing your opponent is good, too, because you need to get your optimal setup out before they can get their optimal setup out. And this, and that was just something that the Mega Man card game didn't have you really thinking about or doing. Well, no, the Mega Man card game does have that, for sure. It just wasn't as interesting or compelling or well thought out. It was like a really plain, straightforward card game. Uh, the elemental typing didn't feel really... Like, the variation between decks and net navvies and play styles wasn't pronounced. You know, like, you kind of just played the same way every time, and it was kind of simple. Mm. Like, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't great. Like I, I don't remember what it was exactly, but like I had a Pokemon deck that revolved around this one uh, this one Darkrai who would he'd be able to put an opposing Pokemon to sleep and then every turn uh, they had to do a, uh, two coin flips and if they failed both coin flips, uh, the Sorry, Pokemon what's, what, would is die. A, what is a dark ride? Uh, it's a legendary Pokemon from like the fifth or sixth generation. Okay, yeah. I, I, yeah, you don't I, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, <laughs> but like, and they would flip two coins, and if they would both fail, the Pokemon would die, and if one would succeed, the Pokemon would stay asleep, and if both would succeed, like they had a twenty five percent chance of their Pokemon dying, and a fifty percent chance of their Pokemon staying asleep, and a twenty five percent chance of waking up. So like, it's all about so, stacking the so odds. So you're basically like running a vortex on the on. on yeah, your opponent. exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. You know, so. Okay. And it was all about getting that set up into place as quickly as possible. Fucking bullshit Akuma tactics. Yeah. So you'd have cards that like let you draw four cards. I, there was this one card I can't remember what it was, but like. If you played one of it, you got to draw two cards, or you, something like that. And then if you played two of them at the same time, like it's special effect, you got to draw like six cards instead or some shit. So like, it's just all about like getting through your deck as quickly as possible to get to the good stuff. You know? Okay, okay. Um, and that's, again, that's really not something that most card games failed at, but that's like, when you're, when you're asking about hallmarks of a good card game, that's a hallmark of a bad card game is when when you feel like randomness is a problem. Yeah. Um, there was this one independent card game I played once that me and my friend bought uh, a deck of at, like, at Fan Expo, actually. I, I actually can't remember what it was card at all, called at all, but it was independent. The guy made the cards himself and stuff, you know? And that game had a real bad luck problem where... You just kept pulling shit did, that you didn't want to... Well, it, there was no there was no distinct or clear oh, 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 strategy. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, this guy. I'm really not sold on this character. How did you get that strong? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> the precious Super Force medal that Epsilon gave me. This sounds like a fucking joke. This doesn't sound real. <laughs> Whoa. Shucks. <laughs> Looks like I've been beaten. Dude. You've won for now, Hunter. That was oh the worst. Oh my god. That was the what worst the? for real. That's Dude. fucking Shikigami no Shiro cool. level. Yeah. You shut down the device. <laughs> Wow, wow, that's good. X, how'd you get you that strong? Communication shouldn't be I really now. can't feel Come my on. body right now. <laughs> yeah, and we have Super Force Metal. Super oh, so do we get a power up now? Uh, maybe. Shove it in Cinnamon's ass and see if it does anything. Oh, I would totally do that. <laughs> Oh god, there's been some great cinnamon fan art coming in. I, I, I appreciate yeah, it absolutely. even more. Okay. Um, Let's head home. When I see Super Force, I just think of like cars. Car That's like, sorry, like cars. Oh, I thought you meant the Pixar movie, and I was like, no, wait, what? no, <laughs> fucking cars. I love them. Like it's a type of fuel you put it's, in or it's some shit. It's a thing that ricers tend to stick on their cars. 
Oh yeah. Are you, are you familiar with ricers? No, not really. It's people like, who have really unimpressive normal cars, but they put fans on them and they put <laughs> wing uh, oh, okay. fins and, and like fucking V fins and all kinds of that crazy means... shit and boosters and just, just make your make your make your make your Yaris look cool <laughs> <laughs> or try it anyway. right. Yeah. Make your old ass, like, unimpressive Civic look like it's doing Nothing something. Do yeah. Here. Although certain Civics okay, I, I, are, I get are a big the gist. deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That makes sense. Your family car. Uh, yeah, wow. All right. Um, that was the end of that area. That was that area. That Indeed was really was. anticlimactic. Okay, I'm going to take a minute and prepare my shit, and then we'll get back in, shall we? Yeah, time to grind. <laughs>